Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third talk of the day uh, here for our Young Learners and Teens Week. Our next guest is going to talk about drama and storytelling. Uh, so with me here today, I have David Valente. Uh, David is the coordinator of the IATAFO Young Learners and Teenagers Special Interest Group and has 20 years of experience as a teacher, academic manager, educational consultant, teacher trainer, and materials developer. Uh, David's recent publication include a co-author chapter on syllabus in the Routledge Handbook of Teaching English to Young Learners. And uh, we're very happy to have you, David. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. I'm delighted to be here this evening um, with you all. So I'm just going to now share with you my PowerPoint. All right. All right. Okay, so can everyone see my PowerPoint now? Yes, perfect. Excellent, okay. So um, this is the second time in 2018 that the IATEFL Young Learners and Teenagers SIG are participating with Brazilian Young Learner ELT. Our first time was at the Braz TESOL conference earlier this year, and now this special Young Learners and Teens Week. And on behalf of all of the committee in the IATEFL YLT SIG, I'm really delighted to be with you um, today. Um, in the history of IATEFL YLT SIG, Sheila Rickson, the author of that history, wrote that back in 1987, that young learners were about to become out from behind the sofa. Now, fast forward over 30 years, and I think they're not only out from behind the sofa, but they're absolutely jumping on that sofa. And events like this really prove that all over the world, Young Learners and Teenagers ELT is now giving and getting the attention that it deserves. And today, I'm going to focus on using drama and storytelling particularly to develop children's speaking skills. Uh, I'd like to start on a participant-centered and personalized note. So my opener for you, and I'd like you to type your answers in the chat box. I have some questions for you. Question number one, what is your favorite children's English storybook? Have we got any answers? Yes, I can see people are typing. Uh huh. So, so far we have uh, Little Red Riding Hood, perhaps uh -huh. Snow White. Uh huh. Very traditional. Okay, so those well-loved tales that are very famous all over the world and exist in many countries and cultures, and also we have modern retellings of those. How about your favourite bedtime story as a child that maybe a parent, a family member read to you? Any favourites that you remember from your childhood? Mm, we have here... Frog Belly Red Bone. I'm not familiar with this one. Uh huh. Maybe you are. No, I don't know that one. I think it's more American. Okay. Um, next question. Storybooks then you use, let's focus now on English teaching. Storybooks you use with children for teaching English. So here people have mentioned the same book so far. Mm -hmm. Some okay. people are typing. Mm -hmm. um, Heidi was my favorite 
bedtime story. I'm not sure if it's pronounced Heidi, though. Oh, I yes. So I think that one was originally um, from Germany or Austria. Uh -huh. Okay. And then how about drama? What drama activities do you use in your English lessons? People are typing. Some of them are not really familiar with uh, using drama activities. Um, uh, Danny is saying here that she's used uh, Frog Valley Rat Bone in classes, the Narnia books were some mm -hmm. of her favorite bedtime stories. Um, Sinan, Sinan saying is saying that he or she has uh, used Cinderella. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny has used improv games with teens. That sounds very cool. Okay, so it sounds like some people are using drama, some people are using story, some people are using both. And hopefully by the end of this session, you will have more ideas for using drama and story, particularly to develop children's speaking. So today, I have four main aims in my webinar. The first one then is that I want to inspire you to plan outside of the box as we say but actually outside of the book outside of the course book and really taking our children's learning outside of the course book using story and using drama are really age appropriate ways to do this and i want to give you some very practical ways today my second aim is how to get children speaking using the springboards of drama and the springboard of story in fun and physical ways. So we want to be very age appropriate. I'm going to focus on children around the ages of six to 10. So that primary age group and what kinds of fun and physical activities can we do to get children speaking that are based around story and based around drama. The next aim is to give you some fresh ideas and some fresh activities for you to take away, try out in your classroom, and then you can share among the Belt community which activities worked for you and how you adapted today's ideas. And then the last one is I want you to go away not just with a collection of random activities, but to actually have a framework a framework that is flexible enough for you to adapt, but that gives you the support you need to use drama and story in your lessons. So, first of all then, what are the benefits of using drama and storytelling to develop children speaking? Well, this is based on an article from Carol Reed um, that you can find on her website. It's an article about scaffolding children's learning using drama and storytelling. You can freely download this. And this comes from the IATEFL Young Learners and Teenagers SIG newsletter. But the first benefit, Carol talks about um, they build on children's capacity for play. For example, a Lego box becomes a pirate ship in the middle of the ocean. So we appeal to children's imaginations, possibility, pretend play, and that really helps children construct meaning from context. The other thing, issues of human significance. For example, story and drama explore personal issues to children, such as a child not wanting to go to bed, being scared of the dark, being worried about making friends, not eating certain kinds of food. And stories really allow the children to explore these very everyday issues that are maybe relevant to their own lives, but safely through the story characters. Also, story and drama engage diversity. So thinking about each child we teach having a unique profile. And if we plan our lessons, with diversity in mind, we can do what Carol Reed says, reach and teach all of the children in our classes. 
and drama and story really help children develop individual strengths and give us as teachers a context within which to develop their speaking skills. That's because they su suspend the norms of place, time and identity. Maybe our classroom can become a jungle. So a story in real time might take two minutes, but actually in the fantasy world could span over 1000 years and we can all become monkeys in the jungle. This really creates a community for children. So they're social, they're communal, they give us a context for speaking skills such as turn taking, cooperation, working together, which are all very important skills for young learners. Um, they reinforce rules and conventions. So from a linguistic perspective, stories have a beginning, a middle and an end. There's often a state of equilibrium, a conflict and a resolution. So there's conventions regarding how we behave when we listen to a story. So in my classroom with children, we take our shoes off, we walk to the magic carpet in groups, we join in the story, we take turns. So they're a real shared experience and they teach useful conventions. They're also important in giving us a context for intercultural learning. We can think beyond the story and around the cultures that are represented in the story and then compare with our own culture. What's the same? What's different? And story really helps children understand that one culture is not better than the other, it's just different. And this is really important for intercultural learning. Um, also, they offer us many springboards for creative work and for tasks and activities to develop speaking skills. And we're going to talk about that later in this session. So in terms of them having affective appeal, they nourish children's imaginations and they really give us good scaffolding to develop children's speaking skills. Now, this is one of my favorite quotes about story. And this comes from The Storytelling Animal, How Stories Make Us Human by Jonathan Gottschall. And he says, children need stories. We are, as a species, addicted to story. Even when the body goes to sleep, the mind stays up all night telling itself stories. And I just think that's so powerful in showing how story is part of being human. And I think that's why they are such a useful tool for developing children's English and their speaking skills. Now, I'm, so that's the rationale. I've shared with you the reasons, the powerful reasons for using drama, for using story in your English language lessons. And now I want to make all of that very practical for you through a demonstration and I'm going to use one of my favorite storybooks that I've used with groups of primary children learning English in many different countries all over the world and I've chosen for you today this one giraffes can't dance and this is one of my favorite stories about a giraffe called Gerald who can't dance now when we doing a story-based lesson, we, we need to follow a framework. We can't just launch into the story. We need to get children ready for the story. And this is where drama activities are really useful and really helpful because they arouse children's curiosity and they get them interested in the story. So, um, first of all, one idea, now a useful reference for you, if you want to read more about the activities I'm showing you, these come, these drama activities come from Carol Reed's 500 activities for the primary classroom. I'm sure many of you know it. And one of my favorite activities is the sound collage. So 
This is to create the atmosphere of the story. And it's through a guided visualization. So I ask the children to close their eyes, imagine they're in the jungle, listen to the sounds of the jungle. And I'm going to play those sounds now. And I want you to type in the chat box what jungle sounds you can hear. Okay, so type in the chat box what jungle sounds did you hear? So let's see for typing. So animals have animals so far. Uh -huh. Wind. Uh -huh. Birds, maybe. Excellent. Great. Lovely. Okay, so what I have is the pattering of the rain, the cawing of the birds, the splashing of the stream the swishing of the grass and the leaves. And what is a really good activity for this is that you ask the children to make, to choose, so give them that element of choice, really important, and have the children choose their own sound, their own jungle sound, and ask the children to make that sound loud enough so people can hear but not so loud that you can't hear their sounds so the children decide with their eyes closed which jungle sound they want to make they open their eyes and they make the sound and a really good activity for sound collage is when the teacher becomes the conductor of the orchestra so the teacher raises their hands and the children raise their voices making their bird sound their stream sound their tree sound the teacher lowers their hands and the children make their sound more softly so raise and fall raise and fall and then you can have some volunteers come up to be learner centered and they become the conductor and this is creating the atmosphere of the theme of the story, Giraffes Can't Dance, because as you will have guessed, Giraffes Can't Dance is set in the jungle. Okay, now another one that I really like, another drama activity is called Follow My Leader. And this is where you get the children ready to follow you through the jungle. So the teacher will stand up, and they'll walk through the jungle and say things like, jump over the stream, go under the trees. So the children are jumping, they are moving under, and they're following the teacher in a line, which really helps with class management because they're following you, they're engaged, and it's suspending those norms. We're not in the classroom anymore, we're in the jungle. Um, so then you, you get them to stand up first, put your boots on, okay, and they follow you miming. Then put your hats on and they follow you miming. And then carefully and slowly we go through the jungle, through the grasses. Here's a stream, jump over the stream, creep up, creep under the branch. And now we're at the jungle dance. Okay, so what's the purpose then of these initial drama activities? Well, as I said, we want to create interest and get the learner's attention. And also what we're doing during these drama activities is you're receptively exposing the children to very rich language. You know, we're in the jungle, jump over the stream, go under the branch. So there's all your rich prepositions coming in, in a very child-friendly and a very embedded way. And by using MIME, by using TPR, the children are demonstrating their understanding of English 
and the physicality of it combined with that fun element is really unlocking the keys to meaning. Okay, what's the next stage in our framework? So remember, stage one, arouse children's curiosity and create interest in the story. Next stage, we need to make vocabulary memorable. So this is more traditionally known as pre-teaching vocabulary. And we're going to do that. I'll turn off my PowerPoint and I'll, sh I'll demonstrate this for you. Okay, now, how do I do that then? You need to stop sharing the screen. So go back to the browser, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Right. Can everybody yeah, see me? Right. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So to make vocabulary memorable, what I'm going to do is some simple flashcard games. And you can do this for the vocabulary of any story. And they're very simple. And in this day and age of us all using technology and so on, I think we lose some things. We lose the tactile. And actually, by returning to something a little bit more classical, such as flashcards, it really engages children in a much more concrete and hands-on way. So I want to introduce to you the lexical set of animals that appear in the story, Giraffes Can't Dance because some of this vocabulary for my elementary level primary learners may well be new to them. Okay, so I'm going to show you three very simple techniques. The first one is what I call quick flash. So really getting them focused on the vocabulary. What can you see? Who can tell me? Quick flash, what can you see? And you're flashing it very quickly and then you slow it down to eventually reveal what can you see? Can anyone type that? Okay, it's a warthog. It's a warthog, okay? So either the children may guess, they may say it in their own language in Portuguese, which is absolutely fine. And then that gives you a way in to feed the lexical item. So it's a warthog. Okay, another one, quite the opposite of quick flash, is slow reveal. So who can tell me? What can you see? So you have one flashcard in front of the other flashcard of the animal and you are slowly revealing. Who can tell me? What can you see? So it's a rhino. Another one that they really enjoy is behind my back. So who can tell me, what can you see, what can you see? So it's a chimp. So three very simple flashcard techniques. So quick flash, slow reveal, and behind my back. It could also be through the keyhole. You could cover it and with a, some colored paper like this, and you could cut out a keyhole shape, move it around. Who can tell me, what can you see? Okay, so you've done that you've revealed um, the lexical set in a very fun and a very physical way, and you've really engaged the learners. And then an activity I really like is one called Magic Eyes. And so I need the wall for this. So we have um, a lexical set of six. So it's a chimp. Okay. It's a chimp. It's a rhino. It's a warthog, it's a lion, uh, it's a baboon, uh, it's a giraffe. Okay, so there's a lexical set of six, and we don't want drilling to be boring, we want it to be fun and we want it to be physical. So. For example, this is how magic eyes work. So after you, the children will be saying, oh, it's a chimp, and the children say, it's a rhino, it's a warthog, it's a lion, 
it's a baboon, it's a giraffe. And then after a few times, the teacher takes one away. With the children close their eyes and then the teacher takes one away. Open your eyes, what's missing? The chin. Till eventually you have taken away all the flashcards and then the children recall one by one and they are always able to do this. It's a chimp, it's a rhino, it's a warthog, it's a lion, etc., etc. So a game like that enables you to introduce the Lexus in a fun and physical way and helps make it memorable for this age group. So there's just a couple of ideas for you that you can try out in your lessons on Monday. And I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint now, because as I said to you, it's really nice to bring back things like flashcards, but also to take advantage of technology. So back I go to my PowerPoint. Stop screen share. Is that right? Yeah, you yeah. need to start sharing your screen again. OK. So let's go back to the browser. Uh -huh and click on the green speech bubble. Right, brilliant. Okay, back we go then to the PowerPoint. And now, so one lexical set that I wanted to make memorable was the jungle animals and the words for those animals. Another key lexical set for this story is the dances that the children do. So, Oh. So this one I really love and the children love it too. And it's another drama activity. And this one's called Dancing Statues. So you will have heard of musical statues. Now we have dancing statues. Now I'm going to reveal each one of the dancers to you. And I want you to type in the chat box the name of the dance. So people are typing. Okay, next one. So somebody here said ball dance. And the last one. Okay, so can you tell me then, what's the first one with the boy and the girl? What's that one? Somebody here said tango. Well done, brilliant. Okay, and what's the next one with the two girls? What's that one? Someone here said jazz, but I think this one is uh, somebody here. Someone else said waltz. Excellent, yes, waltz. Okay, how about the girl with the polka dot dress? What's her dance? Let's see in the comments. Somebody said tango, somebody said square dancing. Oh, um, the one in the polka dot dress is actually rock and roll, taking you oh. back to the 50s. Okay, and then the next one? with the kilts. Any ideas? So the next one is the Scottish reel, R-E-E-L, a Scottish mm. reel, a traditional Scottish dance. And then the last one then, what's the last one? So let's wait a little bit because there is a delay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I think 
people have no idea of the blast. Okay, line. the last one is cha cha. I can see we we don't have many dancers in the room today. Okay, <laughs> so we have um, tango, waltz, rock and roll, the Scottish reel, and the cha cha. And the children are unlikely to know these names, which is why it's really brilliant to have photographs of children in different countries doing these dances accompanied by the music so they can really associate the music with the meaning through the visuals and then you can introduce these words and then what you can do as a drama activity you can have the children do the dancers in the style of that music so you have them waltzing you have them chattering you have them tangoing and then when the music stops just like musical statues and musical chairs, the children have to breathe. And anybody moving has to sit down. So it's, again, a very fun and a very physical way to make the vocabulary related to the story memorable. So remember, we've, we've aroused the curiosity, we've created interest, now we've made our vocabulary memorable, and we need to now facilitate the children's initial comprehension and give the children a reason to read the story, to listen to the story, to participate in the story, and actually to speak. So this is our first speaking activity, and it's quite simple. It's using prediction questions. Now, I'm going to reveal each question to you, and I'd like you to type your ideas in the chat box. So number one, which animals do you think come to the jungle dance? So remember, we've just worked on a lexical set of animals. Which of those six animals do you think come to the jungle dance? Number two, which of those six animals do you think can dance very well? Number three, we've just worked on a lexical set of dancers, waltz, cha-cha, rock and roll, tango. Which dancers do they do at the dance? And the last one, which animal can't dance? And I think the title gives the orange question away. <laughs> okay, so prediction questions. Couple of answers, please, in the chat box. Okay, so people are typing. Let's see. Um, lion, uh, the lion can dance well, probably. Um, mm -hmm. The monkeys can dance well, I think. Walt and Cha Cha. Uh -huh. Which uh -huh. animals can't dance? Snails can dance, but snails were not part of the story, were they? <laughs> so chimps can dance well. Okay, okay. All right, excellent. So lots of ideas brainstormed there, and that's exactly what you want in the classroom. And prediction questions are a brilliant way to quickly and easily get the children speaking. They can do this in pairs. You've just worked on the pronunciation through your fun and physical drilling. So now the children are ready to participate in the story. Now, I'm going to demonstrate I don't have much time actually, so I'm going to demonstrate parts of the story. And I'd like you to watch my demonstration. I'll, I'll turn back on the webcam. I'd like you to think about how I set up the story, how I get the children curious or interested in the story, how I hold the book so that all of the children can see. How do I get the children involved and participating actively in the story? How do I use voice volume, intonation and tone to convey meaning of the story? And how do I communicate the characters' feelings and emotions? And finally, how do I close the story? Now, I'm not going to have time for the whole book, but I will demonstrate some of these things. So as you watch, just make some notes so you can maybe go back to your classroom with perhaps another storybook that's relevant to your syllabus and your context and try out some of these techniques. 
Okay, so are you ready? Let me turn this off. So, yeah, can, can you now see me? Yes, yes. Okay, so the first thing to do, we want storytelling in our classrooms to be a special time. And this is where you're fostering a love of story among your children and a love of books and, most importantly, a love of English. And storytelling using authentic storybooks is a wonderful way to do this. So part of creating a special atmosphere is having a signal for storytelling. Now, you need to develop a signal that works for you and for the children you teach. So my signal is this. So my storytelling hat all the way from Thailand. Now, as I said to you, I've used this story all over the world. Now, maybe I've known colleagues have a blonde Marilyn Monroe wig. I've known colleagues have some huge glasses. You need a signal where when you bring out that signal, the children know immediately, ah, time for a story. And then what we do in our classroom we then create the special atmosphere and I bring out the magic carpet. Remember what we said at the beginning about suspending the norms of reality. Okay, so here is my magic carpet. So you show the children the magic carpet and you say, do you want to come and sit on the magic carpet and listen to the story? And what do the children say? Yes! And you say, okay, but first of all, what? remember our rules. What do we have to do? Ah, we have to take off our shoes. So you're building the atmosphere, you're building the suspense, and you're really encouraging the children to participate in the story. So we have them on our magic carpet, we've got our signal going, and now it's time to start to tell that story. Now, a very important thing with this age group is that we start developing so-called concepts of print. Now, concepts of print include things like the title. So say to the children, where's the title? Point to the title. Who can show me? Where is the author, the writer of the story? Who can show me? Work on the back cover. What animals can you see? And they'll tell you the giraffe, the chimp, the lion. So you're recycling that Lexus and you're really enabling the children to speak with support. So then you say, okay, everyone, are you ready? And then you open the story. What can you see? So encouraging questions with your enthusiasm, using your voice. What can you see? Oh, the chimps. How many are they? Are there? What dance are they doing? Okay, and then we have our inside cover. The lions. What dance are they doing? Oh, it's the tango. And then... Who do we have here? Oh, the warthog. So you're recycling all of that vocabulary. And what dance are they doing? Oh, the Scottish reel. So quite, quite um, sophisticated vocabulary, but in the context of the story, it all becomes very everyday. Okay, really using the visuals. What can you see? Okay, we're in the jungle. And then you can say, who's this? Ah, oh, it's a giraffe. It's Gerald. Okay, and now we're ready to tell the story. So Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and thin. Everybody, show me your long, thin neck. So you're involving the children through TPR and through mine. Show me, show me encouraging them. 
but his knees were awfully bandy and his legs were rather thin. Show me your bandy knees and then the children will all show you their knees. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots of trees. Everybody show me munching. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Oh, poor Gerald. And then questioning, what, what happened to him? Mm -hmm. How do you think he felt? So you can see how the story's going to go, can't you? And you can refer back to your prediction questions. So do you think he's a good dancer? Which animal can't dance then? And so on we go to the next part. Now, every year in Africa, so great opportunity for that intercultural, that focus on different countries and different cultures, different continents in the context of the story. They hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. Okay, so you can imagine with this spread the potential of the story with all of those animals and all of those dance, dance styles and the jungle dance. So you see why we need to make that vocabulary memorable for the children. Now, we don't have time to go on with the story, I'm sorry, but you can imagine. So the animals all laugh at Gerald and we see all of the different dances that the different animals can do. And Gerald feels very sad and very downhearted. So you can see how this story is dealing with those issues of human significance, diversity, being different, being the odd one out, not being very good at certain things. And then Gerald finds a friend, a friend who gives him some good advice. And that's the friendly cricket later in the story. And then he discovers that he just needs to find his own music and his own song. And then he's a wonderful dancer and all of the animals are so impressed with his dancing. And I'll just share with you the last page. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We can all dance, he said, when we find music that we love. So it's a very heartwarming story. And then at the end, we can ask the children, it's very important to say, did you enjoy that story? And it's okay because of the idea of personalization, of choice and a personal response. You know, I've use many books in lessons with children and they sometimes they say no I didn't and that's fine and then that's great speaking opportunity to say why not what was it about the story that you didn't enjoy who was your favorite character who was your least favorite character and then you can ask questions around well friends who are different and is it nice to laugh at friends who are different how can we encourage and help friends who are different join in in our games? So you can take away from the story context and bring it back to the classroom context to encourage the children to empathize. So um, we have en engaged the children in the story. We've enabled them to participate in the story. And now what about after the story? What can we do? So moving back then to my PowerPoint. Okay, are we back now with the PowerPoint? Yes. yes. Okay, so what we can do to really work on children's speaking skills after the storytelling session is I'd like to share with you a wide range of ideas for the way you can work with that Gerald the Giraffe, Giraffes Can't Dance story script to really promote children's speaking. Now, there are many ways you can help the children retell the story and again, bringing drama back into this lesson framework acting out the story. So the first idea is a very simple one. That's 
having pictures from the story, maybe you could photocopy um, a few key scenes, not the whole book, obviously, but a few key scenes, and then have the children work in groups, put them in order, and use those pictures to retell the story. Moving from the visual as a speaking springboard, you can then actually take some lines or a simplified version of the story and have children match the text from the story with the pictures to show understanding of, so good for reading skills actually, and then use that as a script for the children to act out the story. Story related songs I'm going to come back to in a minute. Story dialogues, well, there's lots of potential. It could be, for example, when the cricket gives advice to Gerald. You know, you, you, you need to find your own song, Gerald, and you will be a great dancer, etc. So you can really use the story as a springboard for dialogue building. We've talked about simplified versions of the story. Handing over to the children, having them retell the story by making a mini book where they, in their own words, they write about the key events in the story in a mini book. They illustrate their mini book, so very personalized. And then they use that mini book as a scaffold for speaking. Great craft idea for acting out is either using masks, so a mask of Gerald the giraffe, a mask of the cricket, a mask of the warthog, etc., or finger puppets, again, to help them retell the story. Now, you didn't hear much of the story, but actually there's a lot of rhyme that, that goes on in the story. Um, you know, um, Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor. But the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. So floor, roar. Now this use of rhyme, which is great language awareness for children, happens throughout the book. So having the children match the rhyming words. And if your syllabus requires some focus on phonics, you can focus on key phonics within the context of the story. One of my favorites is that's not right. So for example, the teacher might say, Gerald was a tall baboon. And the children say, that's not right. Gerald was a tall giraffe. Brilliant for intonation and, and sentence stress to convey meaning. And what's great is then being learner-centered, you can hand over get the children to do it in pairs, in groups, and they make up their own, that's not right. So the warthogs danced a Scottish reel, that's not right. The warthogs danced a cha-cha, for example. So great potential to springboard away from the story itself and then help the children be creative and develop their speaking skills. As I said, I, now I want to talk about songs. Now, one of my favorite ways to really combine story and drama and then go away from the context of the story and bring it back to the communicative classroom is by using real songs. Now, one of the songs that I always use with Giraffes Can't Dance after telling is The Lion Sleeps Tonight. And there you see my visual of the sleeping lion. So don't have much time left, but I'm going to very quickly teach you the actions that myself and a colleague made up for this particular song. Um, because it's a really fun and physical way to then bring in real songs. And children, when they get to upper primary, are getting a little bit tired of course book songs, oh teacher, they're not very cool. And so bringing in real songs is a fantastic way to reach and teach your learners. So going back to the sharing the um, webcam now. All right. For the last time, I think. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you the actions and I want you to be brave and I want you to be bold and I want you to do this at home. So the words are 
in the jungle. So in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. So in the jungle, the mighty jungle, a lion sleeps tonight. In the village, the peaceful village, the lion sleeps tonight. In the village, the peaceful village, the lion sleeps tonight. And then we go on. Hush, my darling, don't fear, my darling, the lion sleeps tonight. Okay. So it's a well-loved and well-known song, and it's one that children really um, respond well to, and it's so incredible, incredibly memorable. So very, very quickly, I'll just show you a little bit of that, and I'd like you to be brave and to be bold and try this at home. Are you ready? The chorus for a Wimberway is this action. Are you ready? Yes, people are here typing in the comments that they are ready. Off you go then. Good aerobics. Ready? Ready, village. Ready? Oh, <laughs> I think Brilliant. you get the idea. <laughs> okay, that's one of my favorites, just for you today. All right, back we go. Okay, so um, pulling that all together because we're nearly out of time, we may already be out of time. Um, I'd like to just to summarize for you Carol Reed's framework that she applied um, to Giraffes Can't Dance and that inspired my webinar today. So first of all, arouse children's interest and curiosity. Drama activities are a fabulous way to do this. We looked at Follow My Leader. We also looked at the sound collage. There are many others that you could do to get the children interested in the context of the story and suspend the norms of the classroom. Make your vocabulary memorable. Lots and lots of fun and physical techniques for revealing vocabulary, working on meaning, and also fun and physical pronunciation focus. Prediction questions are a quick and easy way to give the children a reason to engage with your storybook. Work on the initial gist using lots of visuals, asking questions to the children, using your voice to convey the character's feelings and emotions. I shared with you many different ideas for speaking related tasks that help the children in a supportive, creative and child friendly way to retell the story. Go beyond the story, help the children to empathize so we go outside of the character of Gerald and to our own school, our own friends, our own environment to really help the children to empathize. And then transfer the story, the theme, and go back to the English language classroom, but also beyond the English language classroom. And I think using real songs like that help touch the real world and help children see how what they're learning is real and bringing in things like authentic songs, authentic stories and drama 
all help to do that. Now, if you go to Carol Reed's website, there is an article from, as I say, the Young Learner and Teenager SIG newsletter called Scaffolding, Using Drama and Story to Scaffold Children's Learning. And you can download that and that will really give you a lot more background information about everything that I've demonstrated in today's webinar. So I'd just like to summarize with um, some key contacts. So the first of all, we have IATEFL at the top. So that's the main IATEFL website, also the conference website and, and social media for Twitter and for uh, Facebook, Instagram and so on. And underneath, you have all of the channels um, for the YLT SIG, the IATEFL YLT SIG. So please sign up for free subscribe, follow, and share your ideas because there's a real richness happening now in, in Young Learner ELT in Brazil. And I think you all have so much to share with the world and really let's engage in this global YL ELT community and really have your say in this. So I'd just like to say to everyone at Brelt, a huge thank you for welcome, welcoming me today and for engaging so closely with the Young Learners and Teenagers SIG. So thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you for the wonderful session. Lots of food for thought, lots of very practical things. Really good. Thank you so much. So now time for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Um, a question, how can we better use video stories that uh, yes. already have voices and sounds? Yes. Well, I think it depends on the age of the children, but I think that's a great question because now we do have all of that video support. And I think traditionally in the literature, we're always talking about developing listening skills, but actually we also need to work on visual skills and visual interpretation. And I think working with very short clips, so instead of maybe just questions for your prediction, you could show them a freeze frame of a story um, clip and have them predict what they think is going to happen in that story based on what they can see. So developing that visual literacy and then watching to check their predictions. Um, and again, they're a great springboard for acting out and also for fun and physical drilling. So you can use the video story, pause parts of it and have the children say the lines after the characters. Or another one is watching with the sound off and then having the children write the dialogue out the dialogue and then compare their dialogue to the original dialogue. Another one is if you are doing a little bit of a flipped type classroom is you can really use these stories um, for having the children watch at home and then summarizing what happened in the story. So working on the plot and also saying their response to, to what happened in the story and, and then coming to class and sharing those responses. Um, and also that the, they can be used with a book as well to kind of compare the, the kind of the animated or the, the film version with the, the original book version. What's the same? What's different? What did you prefer um, and why? You could also, if you have the tech in your school, such as, you know, a um, set of tablets or, or even just a couple of tablets, you could have the children use the video story as inspiration for them to record their own and uh, act it out that way and listen back and, you know, um, was it fun? Did we enjoy it? Was our pronunciation clear? You know, so helping children reflect on their own speaking skills in a, a safe environment. And, and I think using tech and sensitizing their ears is a nice way to do that. Brilliant. Okay, do we have uh, more questions?
So lots of thank yous here in the chat box. So David, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank for you. spending uh, this lovely evening here with us. And uh, for those of you who want to get the certificate for David's session, go to bit.ly, Li is L-Y, uh, slash Brelt, Y-L-T week 2018 certificate. I'm going to paste the link here in the chat so you can go there. And uh, unfortunately, the, the, the certificate is just, just for those who are watching it live. So David, thank you very much once You're again. You're And, uh, and you. um, we're going to have Claire Venable soon. So stay tuned. And uh, because Claire is going to talk about um, pre-primary learners. So see you soon. Bye-bye.